Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is brought to you by the Anxiety Slayer First Responder Series for Health Anxiety. Do you find yourself repeatedly worrying that you might have a serious illness? We understand. We've both experienced health anxiety. We know how awful it feels and how it can take over your mind and cast a shadow of fear over your life. Over the last nine years, we've uncovered the biggest challenges our listeners face with health anxiety. And in this first responder series, we respond to these challenges with step-by-step teachings, tools, and techniques to help you stop anxious thoughts about your health. Enroll today at anxietyslayer.com and save 30% when you use the coupon code HEALTH30. This coupon is available through the end of August. Again, that's anxietyslayer.com. The coupon code is HEALTH30. Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my wonderful friend and co-host Ananga Sivir. We come together weekly from Kent and Leelanau to share Anxiety Slayer sessions with you and answer listener questions from our inbox and Facebook page. We love sharing a powerful collection of techniques to reduce anxiety. And before we begin today, a hearty congratulations, Ananga. We just surpassed 6 million downloads for the Anxiety Slayer podcast. Woohoo! <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Whenever we pass a milestone, I just think back and I can remember where I was sitting when we first started working together nine years ago and how nervous I was to submit our first episode to iTunes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> here we yeah, go. Here we go. Would anyone listen? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, that's great. And thank you to all of our listeners for coming back week after week and supporting us over the years. And we really appreciate it. And we look forward to bringing you more episodes uh, in the days to come. This week, we're responding to one of the biggest concerns in our group right now. We have a private Facebook group. If you aren't a member of that, you're welcome to check that out on Facebook and just uh, search by Anxiety Slayer and you'll see the group. Anyway, the the biggest concern that's coming up in that group right now is worrying about having a heart attack. And I do have to share a disclaimer. It's our duty to state that we're not qualified medical practitioners and that we recommend you speak to your doctor about any symptoms that may be concerning you. So let's talk about why the mind fixates on our health. Yeah, it's such a difficult thing to live with when the mind does this. What's really helped me is to understand the teachings, the Vedic teachings behind Ayurveda, which we often talk about. Ayurveda is India's ancient science of how to live a long, healthy and peaceful life, a life with an undisturbed mind. And it's a treasure trove of teachings on this. And Ayurveda teaches that our mind can be our friend or it can be our enemy. And the untamed mind is very much like an enemy. And often when my mind's been giving me anxiety, anxious thoughts, it almost feels like I'm haunted by my own mind. It has such an energy to it and such an invasive push to it. And Ayurveda teaches that this is caused by one of the three primary energies or body types called Vata. Vata mainly governs the nervous system in the body. So all these nervous impulses we feel when we have a shock or a scare or worry or we experience a symptom in our body and we think, oh, is this wrong with me? It goes right in our nervous system and it it zips through and we almost can get pins and needles. We get this real fear in our body. All of this is governed by Vata, the movement of our thoughts, the impulses through our nervous system. And Vata can get very disturbed by trauma, by change, by lack of self-care. These are all things that we need to look into supporting and shoring up to help us when we experience anxiety. And what tends to happen when we have these anxious thoughts is that they fall into a groove in our mind. It's like a broken record where the mind will keep going back to a certain place in the body, a certain symptom in the body. My body has a few. There's a place where I had a wisdom tooth extracted a few years ago. If I get an ache there, my mind like zooms in on it and I have to massage my jaw and just relax and and let it go, do a little bit of tapping. It used to go to a surgery site if I had a pain in the area of that surgery and I would think that there might be a reoccurrence of the underlying problem there. So for many of us, there's a few places 
where the mind goes on this horrible tour of fear of things that might go wrong. And then very often it will get stuck on one and it will just keep going back. What if there's something wrong with my heart? What if there's something wrong with this? And it's like a groove in a record. It will keep replaying that thought. So that's how it happens. And then we need to learn how to support ourselves to redirect our mind away from those fear thoughts and to calm the underlying energy that's provoking and pushing the fear in the first place. And learning more about your dosha and mind and body type is going to help you so much so that you get a better handle on what your triggers are and how to bring yourself back to a more balanced state through diet and lifestyle choices. We have uh, additional information for you if you want to dig in and learn more about Ayurveda. And you can go to anxietyslayer.com forward slash discovery. And this is where you can take our quiz to learn more about your dosha. Yeah, learning more about your mind and body type is a really good place to start. It gives us such insight and understanding into the things that can affect us and how to support ourselves. For me, it was a big part of recovery from high anxiety. It's been helpful for me as well, because every time I've ever taken an Ayurvedic quiz, and I think I took my first one in 2008 when I was in yoga teacher training, and I was evenly pitta and kapha. And I thought, well, that's odd. And then vata was really, really low. And as the years have gone by, I've noticed that I am more vata than I was 10 years ago. And that I have to care for my body differently now, or care for my mind differently now than I did back then. And so I, I think it's also important to state that once you find out what your dosha is, that doesn't mean that the other doshas can't affect you. It just means that that's, you know, that's your primary physical or mental state. And then the, the other doshas also are a part of, of who you are. Yeah, everything's moving and changing all the time. So we have our, our constitutional state, our prakruti, which is our birth constitution our original nature, mind and body type at birth. And then things stray, things affect us. We can be impacted by all kinds of stuff, illness, trauma, climate, environment, our food. Mm -hmm. And so then we get to our state that we need to look at and, and work with now, which is what we've strayed to or what's elevated. So somebody may be at birth very evenly, pitta and kapha, but over time things may affect their mind and their nervous system to elevate that vata state, which is very common because our whole lifestyle and whole Western so-called civilization, I sometimes question whether it's civilized at all, but <laughs> the, the way we live in the West is completely vata deranging. The, the movement, the screens, the, the noise everywhere you go has to be noisy, stuff pushed in your face, pushed in your ears. It's all yeah, very, it's very, much. yeah, it's very vata disturbing. So very common for us to become more vata deranged, vata disturbed, and then we experience sleep disturbance, um, random sensations in our body, which cause us more anxiety, heightened anxiety. As our resilience goes down, our ability to cope with change, we get impacted in so many different ways. But once we know that, we can know yeah. that there is so much we can do to support ourselves. So it's not right. bad news. It's about self-discovery and self-care. And as you said, coming back into balance, which brings more peace of mind. So it's a great journey of exploration to find out our triggers. We often get asked what's causing my anxiety. There are ways of really looking into your lifestyle and life experiences and, and getting support so that you can feel more calm and more in control of your mind. And when your heart is racing or when you're concerned about your heart or concerned that you're having a heart attack, it's it's often this vata derangement. And it's a matter of really checking in and doing the care practices that you know you can do. Getting yourself grounded, allowing for as much time as you possibly can for self-care. These are two key practices that Ayurveda recommends for calming anxious thoughts. And we like to share our, our example care practices because the they work. And th these are things that we do on a regular basis when we're feeling a little jangly. Warm baths with lavender and magnesium salts are wonderful. And 
you know, that's just something that if you if you have a tub, make sure you're getting in it on a regular basis. And if you don't, then if it's summer where you are, get to the water. I went for a swim last week twice, and it was the first time in the season where the the lake, Lake Michigan, was warm enough to do so. And it was just incredibly grounding. It was so good for me to do that. I was grateful. Also, grounding yoga postures that really root chakra poses, like the child's pose, just getting on the floor and doing child's pose uh, really helps calm your nervous system. And then, of course, we like to share what we drink. And there's a wonderful tea by Pukka Herbs. It's called Relax. And I know, Ananga, you uh, also recommend the love tea. Yeah, love tea is very nice. It's got lavender and chamomile, other calming herbs in it. And I have a mug of relaxed tea right by me here today while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I know uh, that and have used for a, n- a number of years motherwort. And it's um, a plant that uh, that grows all over the place in, in the United States, or at least in the area in the Midwest, that, uh, that I harvest the flowers and turn into a tincture, which is also really good for your heart and supporting your heart. So I have that tincture available whenever I feel like I need to use it. I'm to that point where I know whether I need it or not, kind of like reaching for the tea or the natural calm or the Bach flowers. You just kind of have a, have a sense over a period of practice and time. But all of these things are going to be incredibly supportive when you just are feeling like it's all too much and, and you're, you're starting to fixate on your heart. Yeah, and all of these things come at the root cause. They sound so simple, which is wonderful because they're easy to bring into your day, but they have their effect at the root of calming vata disturbance. So they are very valuable, simple though they may sound. It's very easy for us to discount simple things. The mind can get uh, very fixated on the enormous experience of anxiety and then the mind may tell us, you know, you don't understand, this, this feels so terrible. How can something like that help? But it yeah. does. It does. It help. really does. I think we must bring up the importance of doing everything you possibly can to not Google symptoms. This is something that can cause more harm than good because when we Google, we can find what we think is confirmation of our very worst fears. And that triggers trauma in us, it makes things worse. And this imagined fear and the actual fear affect our body in our body is exactly the same. Our nervous system responds to what our mind sends its way. And it doesn't know how to sort between fact and fear fiction. This is one of the reasons why we talk about being really careful what you allow into your mind, into your subconscious, the movies you watch, the things that you do, but also Googling symptoms. Please step aside from that. Don't do that. Prioritize protecting and engaging your mind and drawing it away from the fear thoughts and into the present moment. I know, Ananga, you have some ideas about how you can get creative doing this. Yeah, and it's really important to emphasize this because we literally traumatize ourselves when we go and look on Google. You know, it's just so easy to see exactly what you don't need to see. If you have a concern, go and talk to a doctor that you trust and you can have a good quality conversation with. You know, Google's also got some clever people on there who aren't necessarily well-intentioned, who know how to catch the fear side of our mind. Very often we could be reading an article and at the bottom it's got all those pictures and titles that you just do not want to click on. No, you don't. (laughs) So very often when we're experiencing health anxiety, we have this weird reaction where we become adverse to ourselves. We have self aversion. We want to get away from ourselves because our very body has become a place of fear. And that sets off a really strange chain reaction in us. And what we need to do is turn to ourselves with compassion. One of the easiest ways to begin doing that is to, instead of Googling, uh, to settle our mind and occupy our mind is to get creative, to stop our mind dwelling on symptoms and body sensations. We need to find something to do that's healthy, engaging and calming. So think about activities you've enjoyed in the past, like walking, maybe gathering flowers and leaves to press, active walking, 
engaged walking in your surroundings or taking photographs as you walk. That's something I like to do to feel connected and mindful and rooted in an area. I like to really explore it and take images and put them in my journal. Maybe baking. If you like to bake bread, then really engage as many of your senses as you can in that baking experience, kneading the dough, feeling the texture of the dough, really lock everything down into what you're doing in this moment, or arts or crafts. It doesn't really matter what it is, so long as you find it engaging, so long as it holds your attention. And the idea is to draw your mind away from anxious thoughts and prevent it from getting stuck in this endless groove of anxiety that we spoke about before, where the mind just very quickly, like a stylus on a on a record, just jumps into that groove and wants to play those anxious thoughts over and over again. We need to practice redirecting it, and creative pursuits is a very good way to do that. There's nothing quite like being out in nature and just being mindful of what you're seeing and what you're hearing and what you're smelling and just Oh, if you can, barefoot on the ground, a great way to take care of yourself. The other thing is that uh, bringing your mind to the truth in the moment will stop health fears as well. You can stop your mind as best you can by working with what you know, what's happening right here and right now. So if I were outside right now in my yard, I would be barefoot. I would check in. I would be grounded. I would be on the earth, feet on the earth. What I know would be that the sun is shining and I can feel that warmth on my face. And if I were there, I would be uh, probably cutting flowers or trimming them back, preparing you know, a new flower space from another one that's ready to be cleared away. All of those things, you know, put that into whatever it is that you might be doing. The truth of right now is I'm sitting in my chair in my office, talking with Ananga, sharing this podcast with you. I'm sitting in my seat. My feet are on the ground. I look outside. I can see that sunshine I was talking about. And I know that I'm safe. And I know that what I'm doing right now is supportive of both uh, Ananga and I and our, our mission and to, to you, our listeners. Practice regularly checking in with what Ananga likes to say, the simple truth of where you are and what you're doing moment by moment. Yeah, because health anxiety is a story. The story we tell ourselves, we feel sensation in our body and we immediately create this fear-filled narrative about it. And it's the words and thoughts whizzing through our mind that get into our nervous system and bring about this awful fear. And the fact of vata disturbance is that it causes palpitations. Yeah. So it's actually provoking the very symptom that we then flag and think, oh no, could there be something wrong with my heart? So to just catch the moment, all we ever have is this moment, and it's like a currency. We can choose how we spend it. Am I going to spend it stuck in fear? Am I going to let my mind grab hold of me and take me on this horrible ride? If you let the mind off the leash, it will spell everything out for you, the worst case scenario, and take you to a horrible outcome. So we have to catch it. And Ayurveda teaches and the Vedic wisdom behind Ayurveda teaches that we're not our mind, we're not our thoughts, and above our mind is our intelligence. And we need to train our intelligence to be like a good parent, like a kind mother or a good friend to us. So we need to train our intelligence to direct our mind and direct these fear thoughts, catch them and send them on another direction. So it's almost like you're saying to yourself, You know, I feel this and I feel fear and it's like, okay, but let's not follow it. Let's, in this moment, what's my truth right now? Where am I and what am I doing right now in this moment? And how we catch and spend that moment has huge impact on our future. We might choose to do something good for our health. If I'm concerned about my health, I'll go to Qigong because I know that when I practice Qigong, I'm helping my health, I'm calming my nervous system, I'm sending healing into my body and I'm working with my body with compassion. And for me, that's a really helpful practice. Or I'll use EFT tapping to take the fear thoughts down and breathe into my body. As soon as we feel fear, our breathing becomes constricted Mm -hmm. and and we're stressing our body and that's not helping our health. So we need to make choices that calm the fear and support our health, investing 
in our well-being. So redirecting to take a walk, go for a swim, drink some warm water, eat something nourishing, follow a guided breathing practice or a guided relaxation, whatever can help us relax and smile into our body and not develop this self-aversion because that brings in some brittleness and some cold fear which feeds into the whole thing all over again. I'd also like to recommend that body work, if you can do it, add hot stone massages or just a comforting massage to your day, to your calendar. Uh, Make it happen if you can. It's something that I do at least once a month. And it's really helped me stay in my body and remain grounded and move the energy that sometimes gets stuck and really deeply relax. It's been something that I've been blessed to bring into my life. But gosh, it's been years. It's been at least 15 years that I have a regular massage practice. And if it's not massage, it's shiatsu and uh, just getting help, clearing and moving the energy. Yeah, and this is how EFT works, it's how Qigong works, it's how yoga Mm -hmm. works. It's all about flow and clearing stagnation in the body. And fear brings stagnation. It fixates on an area in the body, it brings negative energy there, and it brings stagnation there. So when we do the opposite, when we get help, and when you talk about body work, that always reminds me of the saying, you know, the opportunity to get the issues out of our tissues. Mm -hmm. And it's an investment in your health, it's calming and it's relaxing and it's good for your mind, but it's an investment in your long-term health and well-being. So when we can switch out from fear to proactive action, then we're turning the whole thing on its head and the anxiety goes down very nicely, very quickly. And we rarely can share an episode without referring to Bach flowers. <laughs> yeah. They probably love us, Ananga. We <laughs> we don't have a partnership with them other than we use the products and uh, have gotten really good at bringing them into our lives and hope that you bring them into yours because they are quite lovely. The Rescue Remedy contains flower essences that help calm anxiety and shock in our bodies and in our minds. And the, the nighttime version has uh, an added essence, which is white chestnut, which is helpful for looping fear thoughts about our health. So we can't recommend Bach Flower Remedies highly enough. Dr. Edward Bach is the creator of Bach Flower Remedies, and he's a wonderful physician. He was a Harley Street physician in London who dedicated his life to studying these flower essences, and they're surprisingly effective. I've been using them for over 20 years, like 30 years now, and uh, they're incredibly effective. And he did remarkable research into this white chestnut remedy, and he describes it as being the remedy for when we can't prevent thoughts, um, ideas and arguments that we don't want, those unwanted, painful thoughts entering into our mind. Sometimes they force entry into our mind. So white chestnut's the remedy for that. And it's for the times when we're struggling to hold our interest on something else to keep our mind occupied. And that those thoughts can just break in. They can often be nighttime thoughts and they can just circle over and over when we get fixated on a symptom or an area in our body. And it's almost like a mental torture where the mind just gets stuck and loops over and over on those thoughts. And those type of thoughts he describes as driving out peace and interfering with our ability to think of what we're supposed to be doing for the day, our work or our pleasure or our purpose for the day. So white chestnut is the remedy that helps calm those unwanted, persistent looping thoughts that can break in and take over our mind and help steady us and hold us steady so we can re-enter our day with with presence and with interest, which is something I'm hearing a lot at the moment from those that I support with anxiety is how to focus on work and family and remaining present in the day. So it's a great remedy to support that. So there's things we can do and also it's always nice to have a little Herbal natural support, we get asked about that a lot. So rescue remedy is something you can take. You can add it to your herb teas, add it to your water flask in the morning, keep it by your bed if you wake up with anxious thoughts at night, and it's remarkably effective. Well, I'm glad that we talked about this today because this worrying about having a heart attack and worrying about our health, it really does rob us of of so much joy. And by 
just starting to work with some of these suggestions, you will notice a difference by caring for yourself, putting yourself at the front of the line, and allowing yourself to really understand that these practices work. So even when your mind tells you that they don't, start today. Start with something today. And it will make a big difference. And if it seems like it's not getting any better, absolutely talk to your doctor, talk to somebody that you trust and see where you can take it from there. But there is really so much that you can do. We have a special offer on our Anxiety Slayer First Responder Series for Health Anxiety. And the purpose of this course is to help you learn how to stop health anxiety thoughts from spiraling out of control and hijacking your mind, everything we just talked about today. Lessons in the course include how to stop anxiously fixating on symptoms and sensations in your body, how to use EFT tapping to stop health anxiety and build peace of mind, and also calming, a calming breathing practice for slowing racing thoughts. And for a limited time, you can save 30% when you use the coupon code HEALTH30. So visit anxietyslayer.com. Click on the banner and you can save 30% until the end of August when you use the coupon code HEALTH30. Thank you again, Ananga. It's been a pleasure. And congratulations on 6 million downloads. Thanks, Shen. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Some friends and listeners have been with us throughout the whole journey of Anxiety Slayer since we started together nearly 10 years ago. 10 years this autumn, this fall. So thank you, everyone, for listening.